Hello. So today we are talking about Fyodor Dostoevsky's notes from the underground. Now Dostoevsky, um, if you have not ever read him before or have not come across him or heard of him, he is one of the most famous Russian writers of all time. And he wrote a whole number of very famous books. Uh, for instance, the Brothers Karamazov, uh, Crime and Punishment. Those are two of perhaps his most famous books. The Idiot is another one. Uh, and this work, uh, Notes from the Underground, Notes from Underground, which is a novella, which means you know a very short novel. This is also one of his most famous works. He was living in Russia. His life spanned 1821 to 1888. And Russia... Um, has always been a kind of interesting cultural space. It's not exactly part of Europe, but it is uh, often influenced by European ideas and likes to take on certain European ideas, but also pushes back against other European ideas that it doesn't like. Uh, and so that um, was very much the case during Dostoevsky's life. So there had been the European Enlightenment, which you have read about, and you've read some of the European Enlightenment thinkers. And they had ideas about mankind's movement towards a rationalist society. They believed that uh, everything needed to be questioned, that uh, laws and rules should not be accepted on authority alone. Um, and that humans had to choose between a kind of uh, irrational backwardness and a rational forwardness, a rational embrace of scientific principles and logic. And they believed that societies could be built on the basis of these logical scientific uh, premises, and that good societies would be based on these ideas, and that bad societies would be based on uh, superstitious and backward beliefs. So Russia itself was now wrestling with some of these ideas. Was it going to embrace these ideas of the Enlightenment or was it going to uh, rather ground itself in a more Russian traditional way of living and of being? And Dostoevsky came very much down on the side of the latter, of Russia finding a Russian solution for Russian problems. He was a kind of Russian nationalist in some sense of the word, although many readers today don't really think about that when they read his writing. Uh, he was a Christian. He was a very um, devoted, uh, conservative, orthodox Christian. He had become a Christian uh, later in life. He had, at, in his earlier life, been not an atheist exactly, but somewhat agnostic and had had problems with uh, religion. But he had been sentenced to death for belonging to an anarchist group of writers and readers and the Tsar, the Russian Tsar, sentenced him to death. And he'd been in prison and he was taken out of his prison cell and he was put onto the back of a wagon, blindfolded, led down the street. He was taken out of the wagon. Now all this time he genuinely believed that he was about to be executed. He was then taken out into a field um, and the the executioners loaded their guns and he was just about to be shot when a cart arrived with a letter saying that he had been ex that he had been exonerated or that he his um, execution would not be carried out and so you can imagine the extreme psychological pressure that this must have put on someone imagine being blindfolded and believing you were just about to be killed and then suddenly poof, no you're going to live but he wasn't set free entirely he was sent to work in Siberia, which is, uh, you know, the backlands of Russia, terrible weather, snow, cold, brutal conditions. He lived there for six years. And during this time, he got to know common Russian people and common Russian people. He had a lot of admiration for them. He liked the way that they lived, a kind of more simple, honest life the way that they incorporated old-fashioned ideas into their way of living. They were religious, they were close to the earth, they um, still had family values and so on intact, and he found this very admirable, their community and the way that they lived. On the contrary, 
in the cities at this time. There were young people who were embracing these um, enlightenment ideas of societies based on rationality, progress, science, and they kind of looked down upon these backward country people. That's how they would have described them. Um, and Dostoevsky did not have much time for these city-dwelling um, urban know-it-alls. Uh,